Hey Salem, hey Hope Factory, this is Pastor John and I'm here again to talk with you today about the message that we're continuing in this series. The series is Miraculous Messages. And so today, if you could, turn with me to John chapter 5. John chapter 5, starting right at verse 5. And in this passage, we see Jesus coming in to Jerusalem. He's coming in for a festival. He's coming into town for one of the most biggest parties in town. And while he's coming in on a normal day with his disciples, he stops by a pool. This pool was on the north side of the Temple Mount. This pool was the Pool of Bethesda. The Pool of Bethesda means the house of God. It's where in that time that all of the people uh, who were disabled, who were suffering from a sickness, who were looking to be healed, would go to to go to this pool and sit around this pool and wait for an angel to come down and to touch the pool. Uh, the myth was, the, 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 the story was that if they waited there consistently, that one day, maybe one day, someone would come, an angel, some type of deliverer, some type of miraculous healer would come down, stir up the waters, and in stirring up the waters, then they will hop in, and the first person to hop in would get healed. Jesus comes in, he sees this happening, he sees all of these people surrounding this pool, and he specifically points out and sees a man who is sitting on the side of the pool. Learning of this man's situation, that he had been uh, someone who could not walk. He was lame for over 38 years. Jesus approaches this man and he, be he begins to speak to him. But before we continue with the story, I, I just got a question. Uh, do you believe in miracles? Uh, I want to give you today three great reasons why you should believe in miracles, even today. Jesus walks up to this man and he says to him, do you want to be well? This is, of course, a weird question. Jesus, why would you ask me that? It's sort of ambiguous in his meaning. Like, of course, the guy is sitting there uh, who waiting to hop in, waiting to get uh, his deliverance, waiting to get his healing. And Jesus, you come asking this question, right? The man from this text, we believe, has no clue who Jesus is. He turns around and says to him, sir, I want to be healed. Uh, every time the water is stirred or every time there's a moment like this that happens where people are healed, I can't get in because I'm lame to walk and everyone beats me to this pool. The three reasons why you should believe in miracles is, number one, the grace of God. Number two, the mercy of God. And number three, the love of God, the grace of God. Coming up to this moment, right, it would seem like this man had ran out of all of his grace. 38 years not being able to walk, 38 years not being able to have the movement and freedom and mobility that everyone around you has. It must have been devastating to him. I mean, many of you woke up this morning, right? And you're good. You're great. You woke up this morning and you walked out the door and you didn't even think twice about being able to use your legs. But this man has to go to a place of grace. He has to go to this pool of Bethesda. It had five different pillars surrounding it, which stood for grace. The number of five stands for grace. And so they did this on purpose. It stands for creation. It stands for a new moment. Jesus comes to this place of grace and he begins to give him grace that he thinks has ran out. In doing so, Jesus has this conversation with him. The man has to be open to the fact of believing that Jesus or this man who's talking to him has the ability to actually do what he says. Uh, Jesus says to him, hey, get up, take up your mat and walk. He actually does this. He actually believes what Jesus says. He does the act. And in doing so, he doesn't have to wait for an angel to come down and give him more grace and fuse grace in him. He instead can just pick up his mat and he can walk. Uh, we, we, we see so much around us today of people who are stuck in a place, right? 38 years or however long. I don't know what your situation is on today. You're stuck in a place where maybe you stop believing in God doing dope things in your life because you feel like you ran out of the grace or that you feel like God has turned his back on you. I just want to let you know that God, Jesus Christ specifically, definitely is always looking for a moment to come to learn you, to have conversation with you, to 
get to know you on a deeper level and to offer more grace. Don't ever lose hope in the fact of the grace of God. Every day you wake up, it's a moment to count your blessings one by one. Even if you don't have something specific, you have other things in your life that you can look to and know that God's grace is still abounding in your life. God continues to have favor on us and God wants us to be able to be in a place where we can hear from him. This man is at this place of grace and he's able to then have this conversation with Jesus because he is there waiting for a miracle to happen. Keep believing. The next one is that the mercy of God, the mercy of God still continues for us even until today. 38 years again, this man is living beneath his potential, living without the next moment of his deliverance. And what I want to let you know is that Jesus first wants to come and have conversation with him because he wants to have a relationship with him. The fact that Jesus wants to have a relationship with, with each and every single one of us teaches us that he wants to have mercy on us. We don't deserve to have a relationship with God. Uh, because of our mistakes, because of our past, because of us just being born into this broken world of a system, man, we don't deserve to be able to get the grace of God. But God still has mercy on us like he did for this man who was disabled. God still continues to walk up on us and wants to have a relationship with us. And so all I want to let you know today is that the mercy of God still continues. And so if the mercy of God continues, his miracle still continues for us each and every day. It might not be in the mode by which you want it to or at the time you want it to be. But always understanding that God's mercies are new every morning to us that we wake up is knowing that God still cares deeply for us. We just passed Easter celebrating the moment of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus was so willing to love us greatly that he went to Golgotha's Hill to the cross, got up on that cross and died for you and for me, man, that shows the mercy of God. And so if you believe that story, you can believe the story of the miraculous work that he can continue to do in your life each and every day. Because if he is willing to get up off that cross and get up out the grave to conquer sin and death, he's more than willing to do the needs that you need to be done in your life in order for you to reach your full potential. The mercy of God by his stripes are the things we're healed from. Uh, by, by, by us dealing with um, um, uh, in, in relationship with him is, is how we make it forward and how we continue to do what we need to do. The last point then is just an act of love. <clears throat> it wasn't just enough that Jesus doesn't just walk past this group, doesn't just walk past this man, but that Jesus, of course, loves on him. And after he heals him, says, hey, go further and sin no more, meaning continue to have relationship that's right with the people around you and with me. Make sure that your life reflects the fact that you have gotten a chance to experience this miracle. Jesus has mercy on him as an authority, as the man who owns the pool and owns the angels that came, the king of the angels who could have healed everyone that was there. Think of the other people who didn't recognize who Jesus was because they weren't spending time trying to get to know him. And think of the other people who didn't get a chance to be healed. And so we know that we can take everything to the feet of Christ or to Christ. The Bible says that we can come boldly into his throne room. The Bible says that we can ask of him what we need and he'll listen to us. And knowing that he loves us so greatly that he's willing to do anything it takes to be able to take us to that next level is what this passage is all about. I think about the need for this world to have grace, mercy and love. Those are miraculous things that even we can do to other people around us every single day to change the trajectory of our social society. I mean, if you think about even Dante Wright, who was shot and who was killed, because, again, we're dealing with police brutality because police officers don't know how to de-escalate and have mercy in moments when they should. Uh, when you think about our government and how they deal with people every single day, uh, people who need health care, people who need uh, access to proper education, and they do not provide better ways as an elite government for common people to, that need mercy to be able to get their loans forgiven, to be able to move, uh, have upward mobility in society and to be able to be successful. 
I mean, I could keep going down the list of things after things, of famine, of war, of, of issues that we have in our society where there's just such a great need for love, mercy, and grace. And I just want to let you know that we have the ability to not only believe in miracles, but to also bring the miraculous message and the act of miracles to everyone that we meet. Be challenged by this message to be just like Jesus, to be someone who cares, to be someone who loves, and to be someone who extends grace to everyone around you. Be challenged by this message to be an agent for Jesus Christ.